Kelly for not to receive your instructions. Again, I will repeat, obey my commands at all times. Keep it nice, clean, and professional. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. Final instructions from referee Benji Estevez. Welcome to Atlantic City for the main event, folks. I'm Alan Massengill, along with Dave Montempo and Ron Borges. It's been a long night of fighting, but all leading up to this, I'd have to judge by what we heard. It's a pro pavlet crowd for the most part. I think uh, they all paid a lot of heavy toll fees to get over here from Ohio, and here we go. 12 rounds of boxing action from Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. Pavlik on your right side. The champion taking on Bernard Hopkins in a light heavyweight bout. Had a catch weight of 170 pounds. The fight that the money was too good to turn down. And we'll see what happens in this one. They sold out the house practically $700 ringside seats. Uh, the Youngstown Brigade coming down and uh, the Hopkins uh, living about less than 80 miles away from here, but it's, it's Pavlik's crowd. I don't think, guys, the uh, pre-fight uh, ceremony put on by Hopkins and his hood and all those other things rattled Pavlik at all. No, I don't think so, but, you know, that was all part of the gamesmanship that's going on here, the referee controversy. Uh, there was an argument over who was coming in the ring first. Pavlik's people said, we're the champion, we come in last. Hopkins people said he's the legend. He comes in last. So ultimately he came in last and made Pavlik wait in the neutral corner. Which won't help him with the fight stand. Hopkins applying a little pressure there. A huge age difference, as we've mentioned, of 17 years. Hopkins is heading straight to the Hall of Fame. And he retires for the second or third or fourth time. He's, he's already had one retirement. That's never enough. Never enough. Well, this is certainly the pace Hopkins would want this fight fought at. Yeah, he's waiting. Pavlik cutting off the ring, being yeah, enabling Hopkins to wait and then take a shot at him, which will try to dig the right hand under the ribs. And it, it should be mentioned that the man who ended the great middleweight reign of Bernard Hopkins, Jermaine Taylor, was a guy that Hopkins couldn't beat and Pavlik destroyed after being knocked down and coming back and won twice. Yeah, two, two fights for each. Two fights for each. Let's go. In that first fight with Taylor, he hit Hopkins with a good right hand in the second round and slowed him for several rounds, but then Hopkins mugged him from round nine on. And, and Taylor really hasn't been quite the same since then, although winning the rematch. He'll try to do the same against Pavlik, try to mug him. Pavlik trying to lead right there. The that last 15, 20 seconds, pretty fast, fast pace and a very Fast first round. Take your time. Take your time. Straight up your legs. Straight up your legs. Straight up. Patience. Okay, baby, we got 11 more of these fucking things. You want that, huh? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I just want to do that jab. Try to put us in position. All right, bud? Jab your way. No matter what yeah, you're jabbing. Yeah, yeah. Don't make it hard, though. Let's just keep moving that chain for me, eh? Just stay away from them ropes. Keep that walk you're doing. You stay off the rope, baby, and anything else is smooth. Nice and relaxed, you're in control. The right hand is there, just keep walking. Take your turn, drop that shot. You wanna look for that right hook up underneath? The Hopkins charges at Pavlik, who starts to follow him, and then Hopkins scores with the left hook as he went after Pavlik. It was mostly all blocked. Looked better than it actually. It shows what he'll try to do, though, sure. which is to have Pavlik standing there. Uh, and then go out of and then come out. A little issue here already. Too much Vaseline. Usually the Vaseline issue. Yeah. Time in. Okay, round two. As you'll notice, uh, we, we talked about 
Hopkins finding different ways to get the job done. We've seen the development of Kelly Padlet with good right hand just missing from Hopkins. Hopkins showed a lot of speed here tonight, guys. And, yeah. and he's come out of some recent fights, you know, good, good fast start, and he has a beat on the right hand over the jab of Padlet that he's trying to score. I'll tell you one thing that's surprising to me is, is Pavel just looks a lot bigger than Bernard Hopkins, even though they weigh the same. Oh, there's a left hand that got in on Pavel. That's been the issue that we were talking about. Pavel is a dominating force at 160. And he comes in weighing in at 169 for this, and that, don't tell him what his weight was tonight, but he walks around at 175. That this is a, a different looking Pavlik by far. I agree. He breaks the back both these Well, you're going to see a guy tied up a lot. You're going to see a guy fighting someone who wants this to crawl along in, in, in fits and starts and not to have a huge, you know, quick fight. Hopkins would like this to be an uneven battle in terms of its pace. The hill change like a chameleon throughout the fight. Showing flashes of speed early, but don't be surprised when you start seeing the shoulder movement. Oh, Hopkins got to him. He sure did. Caught him with a straight left hand. He sure did. You can tell Pavlik's reaction. He's in a little bit of trouble. Of course, we've seen that before. Same round, he got hurt Jermaine Taylor. Remember the second round? Yeah, he was down and two punches from being out in that one before coming back. No combination, left hand, right, left, got in. You've been talking about the right hand over the jab. Pavlik's got to keep him off of the jab, and he's not throwing it. Well, Pavlik does need to fire a quick jab and then bring it back because Hopkins is playing off that. And then charging him and, and doing the mugging job. There you go, part of the gamesmanship. I told you, you're not going to see speed all the time. You're going to see a, a bull rush every now and then. Pavlik already starting to get a little bit of a mouse on his right arm. Well, that might have been a wake up call for the young fighter. Well, it's time to fight. Yep, time to go. Let's see what they say. Job. You ain't working on anything we worked with. You understand? Yeah. Please, you gotta work this kid. You gotta double your jab. Yeah. All he's doing is pot shot you with one or two shots. Now you gotta keep working. Double your damn jab, throw your right hand, come back with something. Don't just keep following him around the ring. Well, why are they upset in the corner of Kelly Pavlik? Because he's not doing anything. No double jab. And no when single you don't jab. jab it, Hopkins can come at you with that right hand lead. Normally what Hopkins is doing is, this is how you'd fight a lefty. But he comes and throws the right hand lead against the righty, and it confounds Kelly Pavlik here. Just one of the many tricks that has made Hopkins such a great fighter over the years. All right, we'll see if that was a wake up call for Kelly Pavlik. You heard it in the corner, we're talking about that jab, and he wasn't throwing, he wasn't doing as Ron said anything except let, let Bernard use his strategy to fight him as if he's fighting for the lead right hand. You can't, the southpaw. can't throw a double jab if you're not throwing a single jab. Right. Yeah, you got to throw one first to get the second one, don't you? It's like you can't pull the trigger. Whether well, he has too much respect for Hopkins, which can be a problem. Or, or Hopkins is lined up defensively exactly where Hopkins, uh, where, where Pavlik wants to throw the jab, and he's waiting. And, and Hopkins is smart enough to take the fight to him when he can, and that's what he's doing. And I think Pavlik didn't now, expect has got his hands full here. Now, Hopkins senses indecision, and then he jumps on him. You won't find a more cerebral fighter than him ever. But Pavlik was not expecting Hopkins to set the pace because he hasn't been in his last few fights. And as we but said in the preview, you, you never know what Hopkins is going to do. He does what he has to do, and right now he's just, I think he just adjusts on the fly like all the great ones do. He senses uh, some kind of weakness, and 
That's where he is. I, th I think his feeling also was, I'm going to come for him before he comes for me. And he's getting off the, the punches early. And Pavlik hasn't landed anything solid. Crowd reacting to this 43-year-old legend in the ring taking it to the 26-year-old. This is a veteran sensing that the upstart fighter, younger fighter is tight. So he's taking advantage of that. And, and so far the uh, the weight class deal for Hopkins is working out too. Guy's just not uh, coming up with the same type of power, but he is tight. Havlick uh, has to let his hands go and, and try to get into a rhythm. He can't allow himself to get tied up like, he, like just happened yep. in here. You got him in a position you want him in. Don't let him grab you. You got a punch. And that's another sign of that hesitancy. And what we're seeing now from Hopkins right, is no what punch. we've expected to see throughout a lot of the fight, the stopping and the starting. But he was able to get out in front before this and get some nice flurries together because Pavic left himself open. First good stiff punch of the night by, by Pavlik at the crowd. Roaring momentarily. Yeah, he's sensing that he's got to get going here. Five seconds. All right, let him out, let him out, let him out, let him out. Let him out. Let him out. Combination yeah. of a sweet shot, a hold, and a sweet shot. Round four. Nazim Richardson, uh, Hopkins trainer, basically wanting to slow down a little bit, feeling that maybe he's, he's coming out and trying to do a little bit too much. He didn't slow down the air. He working the body, working his jab. He's out jabbing Pavlik. Pavlik had to pull the right hand back right there. Well, Hopkins has been doing all the action. And how big is a three-point lead at this point of the fight, if that's how the judges see it? Pavlik would have to win seven of the next nine rounds to win the fight. Talk about no margin for error. Now we got now we got Hopkins going into the movement and hard to hit mode. Then some, sometimes he gets into that Evander mode, is what I call it. And back, you know, he's backing the up. Holding up hitting. He's backing up a little more. He's laying yep. on the ropes on purpose. Yep. He's trying to steal a little rest. I bring no punch and step back. Yeah, like maybe his mid-round strategy. And that's where Pavlik has to take advantage of. Don't let him rest. Make him work. And that's uh, one thing they emphasized coming in, that they would set a pace that they liked and Hopkins did not. Bring no punch. Let's go. Let's go. And, 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 and your observation coming in, guys, is that Pavlik, I never thought he'd look bigger than Hopkins. But he obviously is. Bigger and thus far slower. slower. All right, let him out. Let him out. Let him out. Let him out. Uh, indecision. Watch the back of the head, both of you. One minute to go in round four. In a sense, Hopkins picking up the pace just a little bit. Uh, Havlick hasn't figured it out yet. He may, he, he may not, but he's got to do what he does best. Well, he's, he's and not worry about what Hopkins does. He's starting to launch a little bit more. Yep. Uh, he's just trying shoulder. to put more into his plan. Hopkins is the genius of making the other guy do what he wants him to do. He's got to turn that equation around on him. Good left of the body there by Hopkins. And he holds and slips back out. He, he steals 10 to 15 seconds of pure right. Right. Hold on. tremendous punching right. and then slows the pace now. down again. This is, like you said, Dave, it's going to come in spurts and waves. Remember that double jab that Jack Lowe was talking Five about? Seconds. Has anybody seen that? No. And it's a slow jab, too, the one he's throwing. He's just started with the single. Go to round five. Kelly Pavlik has some catching up to do. Turn it around a little bit around four. 
Hopkins pulling the lead left hook. And, and, and the famous Pavlik jab has yet to show up. And when it does, it's sort of pawing out there, and not the uh, effective punch that it has been in the past. And when the jab right, right hand behind it is, is what you've made your living on, you take the jab out, you basically aren't doing anything. Maybe surprising Pavlik about the hand speed of Hopkins on the inside. The because he's not, uh, he's not uh, doing the jab in the right hand because of what Hopkins is doing back. Uh, Briggs, step out, step out this one. I think the aggressiveness of, of Hopkins has surprised him. They thought it was going to be a lot of use of defense, and he would have to open up his defense. And it's been the opposite, which is the brilliance of Bernard Hopkins. And remember, this man is 43 years old. Look at the quickness in the inside and the uppercut. Stealing points. You know, Maverick worked a little bit to the body, but he just got tagged again. 43 going on 28 right now. The way he looks. A few years ago, that would be unheard of to think a guy would have this much speed and stamina at age 43. And now he's, and now he's putting the punch. evander on him. <laughs> he's holding, he's hitting, he's using his head. <laughs> But look at this, Hopkins just walking away from an almost low blow. Holding and hitting. Then going to the body. Pavlik had a clean shot there almost, but couldn't land it. Now there's a right hand that finally came back. The Pavlik crowd says, hey, it's the fifth round. We're waking up here a little bit. But look at the countering by Hopkins. Now Hopkins goes out in the middle of the ring and takes it to him. And the speed, the hand speed, guys, I think is the difference right now. Well, no, it's surprising, Pablo, too, because in Hopkins' in last few fights, we haven't seen this kind of sustained hand speed. And Pablo's starting to bleed from the nose, and, and Hopkins is doing a good job of BSing the referee into thinking he's getting hit behind the head when he's not getting hit behind the head. So-called old man over there, but he's not doing it. The problem with that is, is that the other guy's quicker. Round six. Well, he's particularly quicker if you don't throw it. <laughs> and, and, and most of the handicappers going into this fight said, okay, Hopkins got to get inside and, and work the body, but he's doing it both ways. He's winning it from the outside with speed. Well, he's being given more of a gift than Maybe some people would have thought based on the style and what Pavlik is leaving himself open for. Yeah, the Pavlik supporters would say that no way would they figure he'd get in there and freeze up as he has done throughout most of the first five rounds. Hobson waving Pavlik in. His Pavlik is smothering, he smothers himself. When he gets the position to jab, instead of jabbing, he keeps coming forward. Just what Hopkins wants, and he smothers him. Sneaky right hand over the top, and then Hopkins holds on. Right there, he should be jabbed, but he's not. Then Hopkins beats him to the jab, and it sets up the right hand. Little head Patrick. movement on the inside. Oh, boy. Watch your heads, guys. Watch your heads. And that's all you get out of it is watch the head, so Hopkins gets out clean with that. Be a breather round for Hopkins right here. That missed. Crowd reacts. Watch your head in there. Watch your head in there. It's amazing that it, even though that punch didn't land solidly at all, that Hopkins is out there <laughs> winning the battle from the distance and getting off faster. And showing some pretty good movement good after. Good movement, yes. A sneaky right yep. hand, and then he's out of those there. Those things hurt. They don't look like the biggest punches in the world, but those are the ones that can put the lights out. And they're clear shots for the judges, too. So 
you get the full scoring effect of it, then you tie up. Now you've got Hopkins holding the back of his head. You've got Pavel complaining to the referee. Just the type, type of thing that Hopkins wanted to get Pavel involved in. Everything but doing what he needs to do to win the fight. Got some blood on the face of Pavlik coming from his nose. I think that came from that right hand, guys. Yeah. Good, short, sneaky right hand off the shoulder. And there's the head that got in that same spot. What does it tell you when he's landing a right hand over that, over that supposed jab that was uh, is, uh, Kelly's best offensive and defensive right, weapon right, right. to set up for everything he's been doing Five in his seconds. career? It, it shows you that Pavlik is just Point Whoop, out there right hand again. Jab. Another right hand into the round. Watch Hopkins' is, is jab here. Right hand. Kelly came in, but he threw nothing. You can't walk in there and throw nothing. <laughs> no, because <laughs> you're going to get cracked. Here we go. Round seven. Things going Bernard Hopkins' way seemingly tonight, although. None of the three of us have a judge's card in front of us. But you would think that it couldn't have gone much better for Hopkins and what he wanted to accomplish considering. All right, got a little warning there about holding. And whatever else he wants to warn him about. We got a little bit of everything. They can warn him about headbutts, holding. Now the, the key is just not to get two warnings in a row for the same offense. Havlick actually throwing a little bit of a jab to that counter right. Look at that right hand from Hopkins. Wow. And then he hit him with an uppercut on the inside. That with a right hand over the top. After he went to the body, Havlick pawing and missing and looking lost. Right hand bothers you if you're Pavlik. And then Hopkins goes underneath with a good hard left hook to the body. With a right hand. Havlick. Look at the swelling on the right, the, the left cheek of, of Pavlik. From those right hands that are coming in, it's just Freak. not the authority in his jab that you would thought he would be able to snap it out there and, and slow down Hopkins. And thus far, he's just not resisting. Well, Hopkins getting close, and Hopkins wants to hold him. He lets him hold. It. Hopkins oh, has a way of making you want to hit on like yourself. Another I'm, warning. How many warnings can you get? Oh, it's. It's undetermined. A, undetermined. You just don't want to get one for the same thing. Because if you get one for the same thing a couple of times, then the point comes. I see. What is Pavel doing right there? Nothing. And that's where he should be jabbing right. and walking his way in. He's got him cornered. You can't let Bernard Hopkins then go side to side on you here. And there's only one way to stop him from doing that. Which is you cut him off and throw. But he's you can't pull the trigger. Because Hopkins has him at this point utterly baffled. Right. Guys, I know we've got a long way to go, and you, you guys have covered Bernard Hopkins for so many years. Can, can you relate this to how, how far back he's turned the clock? Felix Trinidad. There you go. That's a pretty good compliment. And certainly Antonio Carver in uh, recent times, as far as uh, he's totally disrobing. Oh, he's hurting Pavlik now with comment. And then he does the bolo punch. Pavlik's in trouble, and Hopkins knows it. He knows it. 30 seconds, it's a long time left in round seven. Hopkins put the pressure on, big right hand. What a show. My goodness. I bring the punching. What fountain of youth has Hopkins hopped into lately? Five seconds. Hopkins is smart enough to know if he can't take him out now, he might take him out later. Maybe round 11. Who, Who knows? knows? Time. Talk about turning up the gas here, Ryan. Look at him go. You see Pavlik walk forward. But he's not doing anything but get battered. If you're not going to throw punches, don't walk forward. And that was a psychological beat down as much as there's a physical beat down when <laughs> looks like Hopkins has got a, a third rate sparring partner in there and he's just putting on the show from fans. I mean, it's, it's uh, that was a big round for Hopkins. We've got a long way to go and anything can turn, folks, but what a night so far for Bernard Hopkins. One of the best rounds I've ever seen him have. I would agree. 
I would agree 100%. And the left, right, left there by, by Hopkins. And, and Jack Lowe was, was telling Pavlik between the round, but you're smothering yourself. You're, you're coming, you're not throwing your jab, and then you're getting too close to him, and you can't throw anything. Uh, they were talking before the fight that they figured they could put the kind of heat on Hopkins to maybe average close to 100 punches a round, and that has not happened. I mean, has been nowhere near that. And he's right there with the first little bit of a double jab thing there he was throwing. But look at Hopkins come back. The speed's the difference, guys. It looks like they, uh, before the fight, they changed two of the 43-year-old legs. And he's not snapping that jab, I think. You wonder, you know, there was a rumor before the fight that Pavlik had hurt his left elbow during training. They denied it, said he's fine. And yeah, I will assume that he is fine. But he's not fighting like he's fine. Now, he has not been the least bit comfortable this entire night. Uh, the tightness that he showed right out of the gate has kept there from him. He's never been able to loosen up and get into a flow, and, and Hopkins deserves all the credit for that. Well, uh, and do you think it may be because he's in a different body tonight? I mean, I yes, well, the, the, the weight. The, yeah. the, the weight is one factor, but I think the... Uh, the other surprise factor is, is that Hopkins has looked brilliant. You know, nobody, there really a lot of people, would have been a stretch off the Calzaghe fight to think that you'd get all of this from Bernard Hopkins uh, up to this point. And now he takes the point away from Pavlik. Well, that's, that's devastating. Which really kind of makes you wonder. Come on, Bernard, let's go. Wow. <laughs> Pavlik. Pavlik's going to need a KO, guys, the way the score is going. No he had, question. He had no points to give. Nope. A big right hand there over the top of that non-existent left. Look at the left hand also by Hopkins. Those are strong, hard punches. I don't think Pavlik thought in a million years he'd see this kind of speed. No, brought Hopkins' his last yeah. few fights. Bop, get out, bop, get out. But if you don't have enough of a deterrent Five for him, seconds. then he'll just walk Three. through you. Turn back the clock. There's Hopkins just ties up Pavlik. Hopkins moves his head to the side. He gets a glancing shot off the side of the head, and they take a point. Smart. That's, a, that's just that's ring savvy, Ron. That's that's what you. <laughs> it's smart boxing. It's smart boxing. And then he, he fires a headbutt there, but the referee is not looking because uh, he knows where the referee is. And you know, guy, look at this combination in the speech. That's what makes this sport so great, guys, because you just never know. And here you go. You've got Bernard Hopkins losing twice to Jermaine Taylor. You've got Pavlik's two dominating wins over Jermaine Taylor. So does A plus B equals C? No. Not He's got the total uh, wraparound ahead. here. Hopkins is taking it to Kelly Pavlik. You see there, Pavlik had Hopkins where he wanted, and then he kept moving forward. He kept moving forward rather than throwing. So by the time he got ready to throw, he had no punching distance. And he caught one in the ribs too, Ron, right as he came forward. Wow. We're round nine, scheduled for 12 here at Boardwalk Hall. They said in the corner of Bernard Hopkins that he's never faced somebody with a jab before. Actually, he did in Jermaine Taylor, but what really has bothered Pavlik is the mobility of Bernard Hopkins. The fact that he's used a lot of this ring Good surprised right him. And the hand speed and this ring intelligence. Let's see if the, <laughs> uh, what Hopkins does here is in terms of putting the pressure on with the, in, in round nine, he, he knows Instinctively, there he is on the cards. Another right hand over the top. In his corner, Hopkins' corner, also talking about the right hand and the right hook in there. I think if he puts him down, it will be the right hook. Pavlik just looks like he is just completely flat. Yep, and he's been. Uh, and he's overtrained or what? I don't know, but completely flat. He's had that look since the opening bell. Yeah, 
Little cut opening up under the eye of Pavlik, left eye. Well, maybe that's just blood from the nose, hard to tell. That right hand by Bernard, I mean, it's done so much damage. And now he's gone into that, you know, the, the spurt and stop roll that Dave's been talking about so much, doing just enough. And as he was retreating just there, you can see it again. Along, he retreats along the ropes. Pavic comes in and paws with his left hand. He doesn't throw his left hand. And when you do it like this with Hopkins, you shorten the rounds. You make it maybe a, a 90 second round with the spurts, and then you win the uh, short exchange. And now he takes a count away from Hopkins for hold. I thought he might do that. He gave an indicated indication between rounds that maybe he had to even it out a little bit after the other one. Hey, for, for, it's still a good deal for Hopkins, with everything that's going on. And, and a night when everything's gone wrong, that's just another one. And, and maybe the biggest one if it becomes a big problem because of that right hand. Hopkins, you heard his corner talking about going 12. I mean, he's going to do what it takes to win this fight. And if he gets the opportunity to do something big, maybe he'll take it. But he, he knows he's in charge of this thing. The damage that he's, that he's doing on Pavlik. Pavlik appears to be almost in a state of shock. And you talk about a ghost. He is a ghost of the guy who beat Taylor and the guy uh, who's been dominating opponents for the last couple of years. He just ate a left and another combination. Break. Let's go step back both of He's being asked a lot of questions that he has no answers for. By maybe the smartest guy in boxing. Don't spin him, don't spin him, don't spin him, don't spin him. Let's go. Round 10. And if it was a normal human being in there, uh, uh, and Bernard Hopkins, you have to say that the later rounds were supposed to go Pavlik's favor because he's only 17 years younger. But new, no, that's not the case. He's been chopped down, Pavlik has, by everything that Hopkins can throw at him. And then the right hand didn't, wasn't effective there. Hopkins comes back and scores some points. And if you look at the left hand, the way Pavlik is throwing it, the glove is even Great. open. It's like he's pawing his yeah. way through a snow no snap. Stone. It's no snap. It's like he's trying to catch something coming back, whether it's coming back or it isn't. Totally on the defensive. Right to the hip. Right, break, no punch it, no punch it. Let's go. I don't think Hopkins is. Well, that's the first big right hand. Right, no, watch that, watch that, watch that. Of course, watch. grabs break. after that. Wasn't that big, but it was a more accurate than one that we've seen in a while from Pavlik. That right hand over the top right, is step pretty good, up, too. Screen, Hopkins. Up. This is the kind of round that we, we talk about where it's kind of Hopkins kind of coasting through number 10, thinking about 11 or 12, I think. And he'll wait. And he's willing to, give the, willing to give the round away, but, he's, but Pavlik isn't doing enough to take it, I don't believe. Bogies, 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 it's a textbook bogies. way of uh, fighting with a lead. Good, good observation there because that's exactly what he's doing. And if anybody knew what he was doing, it'd be Bernard Hopkins. Watch here. Hopkins flurries on the inside. He goes to hold with the left hand, and he says, I can hit him with the right hand, so he does. Going to round number 11. Bernard got a little redness on his uh, left cheekbone, but other than that, Unmarked. I forgot to ask guys, what were the final odds going into this fight? A little bit points. more than a two to one favorite, uh, I believe, is Pavel. Oh, step back, both of you. Bring it up. Break. Like you said, I believe Hopkins is in that fighting with the lead mode. Break. The other thing Hopkins has done effectively here is take the crowd out of the fight. This yeah, is, it's, a bit of a like a it's like a funeral. It's like a funeral. People are waiting for something to happen. 
and it's already happened. And it's Bernard <laughs> Hopkins. He's really taking, he's taking the fight exactly out of Pavlik right. and he's taking the fight out of the crowd. You know, some people right now are saying, I drove 400 miles for this. Did you expect to hear any booing like we're hearing? Of course, we are near Philadelphia. Santa Claus isn't safe. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, you've used so many adjectives, uh, out of sorts. Uh, Watch your heads. Pavlik Watch your heads. maybe overtrained. Uh, fighting in a body that he's not used to, maybe falling into Bernard's trap when they made this weight. I'm sure that the elbow theory will rear its ugly head. Sure it will. But, you know, Hopkins jumped on him early. He turned up the pace. And when Pavlik intended to be the guy who was going to fight it at a high rate. Okay, Hopkins, that right hand, another right hand. You know, it looks like Pavlik's gas, guys. Yep. Just, he, he doesn't have uh, much in there, and he's just really... Pretty much on fumes, tying up now. And, and you know, it's a lonely place in there when you know you need a miracle. Break. And uh, you doubt whether you have it in you. Well, we got time left in this fight. Anything can happen. But Break. You, and we can speculate afterwards, but you have to wonder <laughs> if Pavlik would, would do this again at this weight. Uh, pretty much guaranteed no. He didn't look good at 168. He looks even worse at 170 pounds. He continues. You know, this is a message to him, whether he wants to hear it or not, or whether his people want to hear it or not. He's a middleweight. Yep. Go back down. Take a little time off. Go back down. Hopkins gets off first again. And, and, and I can guarantee at the press conference, the first words out of, out of Aaron, Bob Aaron's Break. mouth might be, well, Maybe not a good idea for him to fight at one second. Bob oh. knows. Yeah, he's been dissected by a master, too. Got to hold him, Bernard. We come to round 12. And maybe we're looking at a crowning achievement in a great career of step one of the best off, that's ever off. been in the ring, Bernard Hopkins. A couple years ago in, in his building, after he'd beaten Tarver so convincingly and he retired, it seemed like there was nothing left for him to do, and he said there's nothing left to prove. Well, he found something else, and it looks like uh, he will climb that mountain. Lost a controversial decision to joke out. Oh, big right hand, and Pavlik's in big trouble. And Hopkins closed the show in grand style. Pavlik, how is he still up? And he's barely up. Will that be icing on the cake or what, guys? What a storybook finale for Bernard Hopkins, Hopkins if that happened. I agree. And now you, you start wondering about any long-term damage up for, for Pavlik. A man who had knocked out 30 of 36 opponents is being Let dominated. Him Let him go. Let him go. Hopkins normally cautious. Doesn't he's care. Calm, he's calm but not cautious. He, he wants a knockout. Well, Pavlik has given him no reason to overly respect him, so he's cutting loose. Hey, look at him. Just hold his hands down. Wide well, grin on his face. He got hit with a little right hand by Pavlik there. Stop and back, just smiled. If you just had turned this fight on at this moment with a minute left in the 12th and looked at these two guys, you'd have a pretty clear idea who won it. You'd also think it was 1998. <laughs> 50 seconds left. This is utter domination of one man over another. Bernard Hopkins. 43 going on 23. A refreshing new angle. 35 seconds left. And boy, does this throw a monkey wrench into a lot of things in boxing right now. Let him out, Kevin. Let him out. Let him out. In a, in a good way, if Hopkins could perform like this. 
Wait, wait. Almost a perfect fight. In and out, showed different looks. He mugged him, tied up when he had to. A great performance. It was a boxing lesson from the start to the finish. That's that, coming down to the final bell. All that's left is to tally it up. Bad blood at the end there. That's too bad. Yeah, that's too bad. Too bad for this because of the. Alan Bernstein scores at 119, 106. Steve Weissfeld, 118, 108. Barbara Perez, 117, 109. As we turn the page to another chapter of a boxing legend from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The two-time champion and future Hall of Famer, Renan, the executioner. Yeah, and you know what? We will uh, we will really miss this guy when he's no longer fighting. We'll just, uh, uh, this was something to savor and appreciate. As you look at the professor and the student here, uh, this is just remarkable. That's what they're saying. This together and bend your damn knees like the coach was saying on the tape when I was watching it. You'd be a bad son of a bitch. All right, don't let this fight destroy you, man. If I got to come up here and get your ass out of this gym with baseball, man, I don't care. I mean it, man. This ain't just victory we talk. I'm a, I'm a real dude. I'm a real dude from the streets. I'm right here. I ain't in here. All right, Pop, Pop, you hear me? This guy's out. All right? This is your destiny. You're a middleweight. And you rule that like I rule it. All right? Seriously, I'm going to come to find your ass. Love you. Respect. All right? And the family. You all right? Yes, I'm fine. God bless you. All right? Yeah, that's